Rockwork explained. Many rides around the globe feature impressive theming elements in the form of large buildings or a variety of props. No element is more impressive nor immersive than the focus of this video. Rockwork can be found on a multitude of attractions at a large range of theme parks. It often serves, along with a mixture of other elements, to create an atmospheric theme for a specific attraction. A perfect example of this is Taran, a roller coaster at Fantasialand, where Rockwork, as well as a variety of buildings and other theming elements, help to create the picturesque village of Klugheim. For many enthusiasts, theming plays a crucial role of the entire theme park experience, and Rockwork is an essential part of that. The interesting fact is that Rockwork can be found in everyday life, not just around the world's various theme parks. I've travelled all the way to Exeter to take a look at some stunning examples of Rockwork outside of the theme park industry. First off, we have fantastic use of large boulders to really jazz up the look of the local neighbourhood. These rocks definitely keep you immersed in the dramatic storyline that is everyday life. This high quality rock work action is something that I know even Sean Sandbrook would be proud of. Recently, rock work has become quite the internet phenomenon. Besides being the focus of various internet memes, the theming element has made its way into virtual games, allowing players to create their own immersive rock work experiences. Fortunately for those new to the gaming scene, a mixture of tutorials can be found online, allowing you to get the most out of your rock work creations. Hey everybody, welcome to Planet Coaster College. Today's episode will look into Rockwork, and this is a special video to explain you guys how to translate the art of Rockwork in real life theme parks to Planet Coaster. So I want to start off with some larger rocks. It is really important when you're building a cluster of rocks in your theme park that you really begin with the basic composition, and I feel like these large rocks are really the best for it and really pay attention to the shaping here. It's quite important to follow a sort of natural flow. And then eventually when you're done with that, you'll probably have something with this and you can move onto another more advanced technique using the 3D gear to actually move these rocks in a 3D space. Now to be fair, you need a very high IQ to get to use this thing. So I really recommend a lot of practice until you work with this 3D gizmo. And finally, I think it is important to get into some of these smaller rocks and just kind of put them into the nooks and crannies of the structure that you're creating. After all, it is quite important that we create a rock structure which is very versatile and flexible in a theme park environment. And one of the last things that I want to do to achieve this is finally add some foliage into this whole build and just kind of put that along the sides of the rocks, maybe on top of the rocks here and there. And you can see I'm using a blend of various bushes here in this case. And even though this is obviously not a bush Planet Coaster College, I think this is an important step in making your rock work blend more into the environment of your theme park. Now finally, as that extra step, and this is really only for the advanced players, use some of the terraforming in the game to kind of change the texture of the ground a little bit. Uh, I know that sounds really weird, but you have to believe me on this. If you practice with this long enough, you can get the right blend of textures in to make those rocks feel right at home. So just go ahead and pop that in and then we're done. And that is basically our rock work structure. Now you've got something on your hands which can make any theme park instantly much more beautiful. So uh, good luck and remember that with great power comes great responsibility. And so with great rock work comes a great responsibility for your theme park as well. Unfortunately, some attractions around the globe are yet to take on the great responsibility that is quality rock work. Many amusement parks are too afraid to incorporate rock work into the design of their rides, heavily reducing the immersive factor. What is even more depressing is that most of these amusement parks are located within the United States of America. Yeah, so rock work. Um, I don't exactly know what that is. Have I seen it before? It's this stuff here. Oh yeah, that stuff. Um, uh, I've never seen it in person. I don't think it exists here in the US. I mean, Fury of Future Vibe doesn't have it, so it can't be that necessary for coasters, can it? You know, it's something extra, I guess. Some enthusiasts haven't been enlightened by quality rock work and don't see it as a requirement for theme park attractions. However, theming and rock work in particular 
can really boost the overall atmosphere of roller coasters as well as cities outside of theme parks. For the final part of my journey outside of theme parks, I've come to Exeter once again, but this time just down the road. If you look behind me, this wall has amazingly been made out of individual rocks. If you look closely, no two rocks are the same, leading to a globally unique design. This is truly a fantastic example of rockwork. In reality, rockwork and theming as a whole can drastically affect the quality and aesthetics of an attraction. Quite often, the importance of theming can be underplayed by many roller coaster enthusiasts. A theme park attraction often has the potential to be a well rounded experience, not just a carnival ride. Next time you visit an amusement or theme park, take notice of the rockwork, its placement, and how it's used to create an immersive and developed experience. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you all next time. A big thanks goes to Silverett as well as Taylor from Coaster Studios for featuring in this video. Check out their channels on screen and in the description below. As you may have already guessed, this entire thing was about April Fools, the single time of year I am allowed to make completely random and off-topic videos. Let me hear your ideas for future April Fools videos in the comments down below.